in Google Earth. So what I'm going to do here is create a new uh, translation or a new workspace. Um, this time I'm going from FFS format, which is just a standard FME uh, internal format. I'm uh, just doing that for convenience this morning. Um, we're reading some data. It's a political mapping data, so it's information from a from a previous election uh, out here in Canada, and we'll call the output political. 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 Isn't politics one of those things you should never talk to in mixed com talk That's about mixed right. companies? You're being a little bit on the edge here. I am politics, and we, we don't have any religious data, but yeah. um, <laughs> we'll, we'll just stick to a more contentious issue. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so here we've got the, uh, the workspace again. Uh, we can look and we can see we've got a whole bunch of different attributes on that data. So there's a different number for each area. There's the name of the party, the name of the candidate, um, the net number of votes they got. Um, okay, so what I want to do is um, basically just look at the results for one candidate. So what I'm going to do is put a transformer in called the attribute filter. And the attribute filter is going to let me filter this information by the name of the candidate. So I'm going to open up this uh, parameters and say let's filter by candidate name. I could type in the names, but FME rather nicely lets me import the names from the data set. So it's found five different people running that election. They're all listed there. So I don't see Mark Ireland there. No, that was... Um, that was, that was a previous election's result. Okay. I was in that one. Okay, so we're filtering out the uh, the candidates there. Um, I'm going to throw a KML Styler in again. Okay. I'm going to connect that up to that person there. So now that these are filtered like that, I could send each of those different records anywhere I want. I could write them to different tables. Absolutely. Yeah. You could write it all to different outputs. Or different just tables. ignore the ones I don't really like. If that's right. Political candidate I didn't really want yes. his votes counted, for example. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Um, so we're going to let, let's pick a nice orange color for, the, uh, for that person. And we'll, we can set the fill color. Don't having a chuckle there. I think that was a political uh, yeah. statement. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it just happens to be the right color for that political party. It, it actually doesn't. But, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Okay, so what I did there, I set the styler, I set the color, I set the fill opacity and the outline of that. Uh, so now we're basically going to get um, polygons that are filled <coughs> excuse me, with that information on there. And you can see that it filtered the information because we've got 960 records coming in and 192 coming out. So we filtered out the people we weren't really interested in. So let's go back to Google Earth. We need to uh, kill that window so we can open another data set. And there's the political file that we just created. Wow. Back over to Canada. Oh, man, that's just... That's awesome. I went over to poll. That was actually um, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll zoom in and have a look at some of this um, data. Um, again, you can see we've got the polygons. They're filled in that color. They've got the, um, the slight um, transparency because we set 0 0.8 as the, uh, the mm -hmm. transparency value. And we can click on any one of these and we can see how many votes that person got within that particular area. Okay, so well, that's, that's fairly basic stuff. What else could we do? Well, we could, for example, change that to see the circle instead of um, the outline of each area. So okay. I'm going to add another transformer to do that. Um, and what I can also say, well, what's the size of that circle going to be? Well, we'll make the size of the circle relative to the number of votes that person got. We'll do that for both axes. So let's see what that does. Oh well, so you could make it. You could have different axes. If you had two things you could make, then you. Know. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So you could say have number of votes on one axis and the turnout on another axis if you really wanted. That would be. Um, that'd be interesting. That'd be an interesting one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to reload the data. There we go. So now instead of having all the different areas, now we've got a little circle for each area. Yeah. <clears throat> where the size of the circle represents the number of votes. Yeah. So that person could see where they're popular, where they're not popular, uh, yeah. and all of that yeah. information. Yeah. And I like that. It's not quite as dense as before. You can add some other data on the top and it yeah. wouldn't yeah. Um, yeah. overwhelm yeah. things. Yeah, I like this one better too. It gives you much, you know, uses the visual system better to convey That's the information. Right. Yeah. 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 
So what, what else can I do? Well, I can actually <coughs> start working in, uh, in three dimensions. We can, we can make a 3D feature. So let's see. Because you can make 3D buildings. You can yeah. extrude buildings up and make 3D buildings. But we can also make data like this. Okay, buildings. so if I had building footprints and heights, I could extrude them to this type of little block. Absolutely. So let's, um, let's put a 3D forcer in there. We can say, okay, well, now this time the number of votes equals the height of that. And we're going to throw in another KML transformer to set the properties. And we're going to say, okay, we're extruding this is yes and we're in absolute altitude mode so click OK we rerun that and that is running <coughs> click back to Google Earth we'll reload and OK so let's just adjust the view so we can see that a little better yeah. da, 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 zooming around and away and yeah. zoom in. So there you go. So now you can see, I hope, that you've got that three-dimensional data. So where the height of that feature actually represents that particular number this time. Wow. So we can do sort of uh, thematic mapping, if you like, just by yeah. adjusting yeah. that data. Yeah. 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 And you'll notice how, how easy it is. What we've done for this webinar is to really keep the workspace as simple. Um, you, can go, you can just go crazy and do really, really fancy things, obviously, by by um, starting simple and, and building up. And some of our users have done some really amazing things by showing dams being built or showing hydro towers being built, That's things right. like that. Yeah. And, th and this one, for example, is an, um, is an enhancement to that political one. Oh, so wow. you can okay. see how yeah. it gets a lot bigger. Yeah. And with yeah. this one, you get all of these choices, which, which poles do you want to see? Do you want to see them all? Do you want to see the boundaries or, yeah. or whatever? Yeah. So, okay. so you can do a lot. Um, one quick thing I did want to show is uh, if we look in the, um, let's have a look in the output folder, uh, KML data, output folder. You can see the KML files in there. So this is just a bit of an aside I wanted to show. So one of the things you might want to do is say, well, how do I look at this data in Google Maps? Um, well, one of the things you could do is just open the data up. But for example, let's take that artwork. I'm going to copy that file, and I'm going to put it in Dropbox. A lot of people use Dropbox these days um, for uh, sharing data. Yeah, Dropbox.com, a great right. free tool. Yeah. So, oh, I just turned Dropbox off when I, when I logged in um, because I thought, hey, let's not have things running I don't need to run. And, of course, I do need to run. But what you could do now is you could right-click, you could say, find the Dropbox link, uh, get that link, go to Google Maps, and you can say, my place is... Um, I want to create a new map, um, I want to import some data, and you've got a space there you can enter a URL. So I could paste in that Dropbox URL in yeah. there, yeah. and it will open up the, uh, the file. Yeah. Or I could just browse for that file. But, um, yeah. but yeah. by putting it in the Dropbox, you're sharing it with other people, so yeah. that's, yeah. that's yeah. really the, uh, the nice thing about that. Yeah, yeah. And also, if you update that file on your computer, Dropbox will automatically make sure that that URL is updated on the web. So then That's you don't right. have to manually go through that. If you had a yes. process running on your desktop every day, wrote to that Dropbox folder, automatically people with that URL would see it. So, That's right. Yeah. It would update yeah. automatically within I their know, Google it's Maps. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. well, I like that, that uh, diversion there. That was good. good.